Today our topic is classifying numbers, our learning target. How can I classify real numbers and sums or products of real numbers as rational and irrational? Vocabulary. First off, we have whole number. That's the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Integer. Whole number that is positive, negative, or 0. So we have the whole numbers and then their opposite, so the negative version. Rational numbers. Number that can be written as a fraction. So like 1 half three-fourths, those are rational. An ending or repeating decimal. So for an ending decimal, that would be like 0.5 because it ends. Repeating decimal is a number that repeats, so it would be like 0 0.7777, and we draw a line over those sevens. That tells us that it repeats. Any of those would be rational. Also, all integers are rational numbers. So all of these are both integers and rational numbers. Lastly, irrational number. A number that cannot be written as a fraction. A never-ending, not repeating decimal. So a decimal that looks like this. It doesn't repeat and it has these dot, dot, dots at the end then that means that's an irrational number. It goes on and on forever. Classifying numbers. Decide if each of the following is a whole number, integer, rational, or irrational number. All right, three. That is a whole number. Yes, we'll put a check mark there. Integer, yes, it is an integer. Rational, can we write it as a fraction? Yes, we can. 3 over 1. Also remember, all integers are rational numbers. If it's rational, that means it's not going to be irrational. It's either one or the other. 1.7, that's a decimal, which means it's not a whole number, and it's not an integer. But is it rational? Yes, because it ends. It's an ending decimal. So yes, rational. If it's rational, that means it's not irrational. Next one, negative 14. Whole numbers are only positive numbers. The integers are both positive and negative. So it can't be a whole number, but it is an integer. It's rational because we can write it as a fraction, negative 14 over 1. And it's also an integer, which makes it rational. If it's rational, it's not irrational. Negative 1 half. It's not a whole number. It's not an integer because it's a fraction, and integers are whole numbers, positive and negative. Is it rational? Yes, because it's a fraction. One half is a fraction. Just because it's negative, it's still rational. It's not irrational because it is rational. Square root of 36. Square root of 36, if we're not sure what that is, that is our perfect square of 6 times 6 equals 36. So the square root of 36 equals 6. That means it is a whole number. It is an integer. It is rational because we can write it as a fraction, 6 over 1, but it's not irrational. Square root of 50. That's a not perfect square, so if we bring up our calculator, we can type in the square root of 50 and get an estimation. If you see that, this decimal goes on and on and on, and we're not repeating any numbers. So since it's a never-ending, not repeating decimal, that makes it irrational, which means it's not going to be rational, not going to be an integer, and not going to be a whole number. Last one, 2 plus the square root of 8. Let's bring back up that calculator so we can take a look at 2 plus the square root of 8. So we do 2 plus the square root of 8. And we get 4.82842725. And your calculator cuts this short. This number actually goes on forever. And there's no repeating. We're not repeating a pattern. So since it's not ending, not repeating, that makes it irrational. 
and none of the other ones. Next piece, opposites of numbers. Numbers the same distance away from zero. So if you put that piece in red on your paper in the line, same distance away from zero. So if we think about a number line, zero's in the middle, one is on this side, negative one is on the other side, one and negative one are opposites because they're both one unit away from zero. So it's really just the positive negative. So the opposite of positive five is negative five. And the opposite of negative 8 would be positive 8. Ordering rational numbers. There are some steps to order rational numbers. First, we want to put them in the same form. I like to use decimals. Put in order from least, smallest, to greatest. If we're working with negatives, negatives are always smaller than positives. And then you have to rewrite in the original form. So if we take a look at the first one. 4.5 is in the right form. That's a decimal. Negative 2.1 is in the right form. And 0.5 is in the right form. We just need to convert negative 4 fifths. That means we're doing negative 4 divided by 5. That fraction bar means divided by. If we do that, we get negative 0.8. So right here, I'm going to write negative 0.8. Now, we can use our number line down here to help us if we want. 4.5 is 4 and a half, so it's going to be right in the middle of 4 and 5. Negative 0.8, that's negative 80 cents. So we're not quite at a dollar, negative dollar, but we're close to that. So we'd put negative 0.8, which remember is negative 4 fifths in the original form. Negative 2.1 is a little bit after negative 2, so negative 2.1. And then 0.5, that's 50 cents. That's not quite at a dollar, so we'd be right here, 0.5. Now we have them in order. This is our least number. This is our greatest number. We just rewrite them, negative 2.1, negative 0.8, but we need it in the original form, so we're going to write negative 4 fifths, 0.5 and 4.5. Our second example here, we have 1 6, which we need to convert to a decimal. So we would do 1 divided by 6, which gives us 0 0.16 with the 6 repeating. 1.75 is good, already a decimal. Negative 2 thirds is, needs to be converted. So we do negative 2 divided by 3, which gives us 0.6 repeating negative, and 0 is good. We know where 0 is. So if we plot these on our graph, 0.16 repeating would be in between 0 and 1. But remember, that is actually 1 sixth, so we'd want to use 1 sixth. 1.75 is $1.75, so not quite at $2, but a little bit after 1. Negative 2 thirds, so that negative 0.6 in between 0 and negative 1. So we could put that right there, negative 0 0.6. And then 0, which is right here in the middle. So now we can put them in order from least to greatest. This is our smallest number, but remember that was originally negative 2 thirds. So we need to write negative 2 thirds. Then our next number, which was 0. Then our next number, which is 1 sixth, and then our last number, 1.75. All right, last piece here is absolute value. Absolute value is the distance from zero. Distance means it's always going to be positive. We only have positive distance. So negative 2 thirds, that negative inside makes it a positive 2 thirds. 3.2, absolute value of 3.2 is just 3.2. It's 3.2 units away from zero. Last one, absolute value of negative 8 is positive 8 plus 2.9. We do 8 plus 2.9, and we get 10.9. That's all the uh, notes I have for you today. Thank you for watching this video, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.